Hey coaches, we're back. Help support this free resource for athletes and coaches by hitting subscribe. Make sure you like and comment your thoughts or engage with us through our social media platforms. We need you to help continue to grow our brand and it all starts by joining our team of over 500 subscribers. Click the bell to get live notifications of new content coming your way in 2021. Hey coaches, welcome to another video of 3 Down Development. Uh, this week we're going to be breaking down Alabama's offense from 2020. Obviously a very dynamic, uh, versatile offensive scheme uh, with some great, great players. Um, but I think they also do some things that schematically really give them an advantage uh, and some things that at any level of football you could work into your playbook. So some really cool ideas that we're seeing across football that I think Alabama does at a really high level. Uh, and this week we're going to post uh, break this into about three videos looking at exactly what do they do that gives them an advantage and then how might you be able to do that in a simple way. Um, so we're going to start by really looking at, to me, the fundamental principle, other than having elite athletes, which obviously helps no matter what scheme you're running, the fundamental principle that Alabama does better than a lot of teams or that gets them an advantage over the defense is they're always attacking multiple areas on the field and they're always looking to create a numbers advantage. So here, uh, really basic set. I'm sure a lot of people run really the modern version of two back. Um, you're going to see one of the base concepts that they like to run is just attaching a bubble screen onto the backside of an RPO. Now that's nothing revolutionary that's happening, you know, across football. Um, but they do it in a number of different ways that creates uh, a number of challenges for the defense. So here it's off of their split zone look up front. And they're just going to read this outside linebacker. He triggers to play the run. They spin the ball out on the perimeter, create a one-on-one. -on -one. And, you know, it, it's a six, seven-yard play. Uh, and that's obviously a, a good play on any down. But to me, it allows them uh, to build off this and get into some more looks that are challenging for the defense. Really here on the outside, the receiver probably should have blocked the safety as we look at the most dangerous player to this play. Um, but just a quick little bubble screen. The other thing you'll see is kind of less movement in the actual bubble. Uh, it makes it a little easier for the, uh, the receiver and quarterback um, to kind of have an accurate uh, elongated handoff. Okay, so this is a second and two. You see they're running the split zone up front, and they're spinning that ball out to the field. Now, taking a look on the back side of this, Alabama does a ton of stuff where they'll run uh, the glance. Uh, here they're just blocking on the back side. Um, but really, they want to occupy the backside too with that single receiver. So they have a lot of freedom to be able to, hey, let's flop the back over here, okay, and uh, and read this side of the field if they were to rotate the coverage so that they have one-on-one -on -one backside. Just be able to spin the ball out, really simple play for the offense. Here you'll get a really similar idea. Again, now they have the formation and the boundary with the isolated receiver uh, up on top to the field. Um, so they're going to run the same concept where now instead of having the slot line up here and run the bubble, they're going to take advantage of Ohio State playing man-to-man -man in, the, in the red zone. Okay, And they're going to motion and try and create some pre-snap leverage. You'll see 24 tracking with uh, that motion player. Okay, and here, you know, Mac Jones really sees that, hey, he's behind. He's two or three yards behind this guy. We know that this corner is going to be tied up with the one-on-one. -on -one. We can turn and throw this out where you get bl great blocking by the receiver and throw this ball into space. If they're able to adjust to this, you know, quickly, whether that's because they top it and they bring the safety down to cover it, or just 24 is, is moving faster here and 24 is going to beat him to the spot, he can give the outside zone, uh, and then they'd be working this into the boundary. Again, attacking multiple areas of the field, making multiple parts of your defense uh, be accountable on every play is a huge part of what they do. So this is, you know, different run scheme up front. Now it's outside zone into the boundary. Just a different look for the guys up front, but again, getting the ball to an athlete in space. Um, and even, you know, in a, in a situation where you're playing a team that's pretty used to playing man coverage, right, you can see it from here that leverage that's created on 24, all right, an accurate throw on the front shoulder and great blocking in the flat, uh, and they're able to get that ball uh, for a first down.
Here we get a bit of a late start on this clip. But another thing that Alabama does a great job of is using condensed sets. Now, they do a number of things off it. They'll run the duo play, a lot of things that you know people have talked a lot about already uh, on YouTube. One of the things I love that they do out of it is they'll run their bubble screens out of it to try and create space to get their athletes to run into. Okay, so you see here, uh, they're running pin and pull now. So you're seeing your third different run scheme, but again, they're just reading an overhang defender over here. Okay, and they're actually gonna block down and pull their tight end around to be the lead blocker for this, uh, this perimeter bubble screen. So again, they just read the overhang defender. He's playing the run. They spin it out into space. Right, and again, they're able to find the end zone on a simple throw and catch of the quarterback. I, one of the, my favorite things in watching their, their season's length of film this year is simply how many easy touches they get for Devontae Smith uh, and Jalen Waddle in their pass game. So again, you see it here. They're just going to out leverage the overhang defender, so he's going to turn, throw it, spin it out. Again, great blocking in space, all that stuff. But if you get a three-on-two out there uh, in that much space, good things are going to happen for you. Another staple you'll see uh, from Alabama is their glance RPO. Uh, listening to uh, Coach Sarkeesian at the uh, Coach of the Year Clinic earlier this week, he talked about some of the options they had in their RPO game. Uh, and this is a really simple clip um, that really shows what they're trying to do. So ultimately, they want to force teams to play too high coverage and run six on six in the box. Like any team, you know, if you have a hat for each player in the box, you're going to be more successful in the run game. So they just run a little stick concept up at the top here. They're basically just trying to occupy uh, these two defenders uh, and make sure that they can't become involved in the run. And then over here, they want to force you to cover the isolation with two on one. So they'll often, here's a good clip of, of kind of a reduced split. They'll have this guy have the option of running the out or the glance or the fade. Okay, the most common one, the one I like the most is just the glance route. So you'll see it here. They're running inside zone and, and they'll fold the fullback in and insert, or, uh, insert old school ISO here. And then they're just gonna read this overhang defender. Okay, now again, depending on the offense you play, you know, Canadian or American football, uh, you know, that overhang defender could be a number of positions. It could be the will linebacker. It could be the boundary halfback, but they're gonna force you to cover two on one with this glance route. So you'll see the glance route in behind this defender. Okay, and they actually get a give here because the defender is sitting at 10 yards. They have a hat on a hat, right? And anytime you get old school ISO hat and a hat, you're gonna be in a good position to be successful. So you see it here, they just insert that fullback on the second level linebacker. One of the things I really like that they do is they don't ask their, their tight ends uh, to block defensive ends a ton. They will do it, obviously, in some of their, uh, in some of their schemes, but they do a great job of running power switch, which we'll get to next. Uh, and, and when they do ask them to block a defensive end, it's usually on some kind of split zone. Here they'll fold, so they'll work the double. Let's see, actually, it's the double plays through the front side. They'll work the double here through the front side, one-on-one one-on-one -on, -one on the back side and now fold in for this will and again if he doesn't add into this run fit right you're going to be hat on a hat six on six okay and the running backs into the third level of the defense